There was somebody I was talking to. I'm not going to put their name. There's like a few different people. Actually, I've had this conversation multiple times with people that, um, you know, they were addicted to drugs for many years and they got clean. And for whatever reason, they were drawn to keeping a tarantula. And they kind of saw that addictive, obsessive, compulsive type of personality take over in this area because there is that shopping for a tarantula online. You know, any, I mean, there's, plenty of scientific studies showing online shopping has endorsed endorphin releases in the brain. So it feels good. Like just looking at species and put them in your cart, click and buy, um, you know, and then it, there's also another endorphin rush when you're actually getting them in the mail and you're unboxing them and checking them out and building their enclosures and putting them up. And then now you've got them in their enclosure. Everything's done. That endorphin rush kind of fades away. And now you're stuck with like, not so much guilt, but like the realization that, I just spent the money I should have spent on the electric bill on tarantulas. And now I have this guilt and this depression and this frustration and I'm irresponsible. And, you know, I, now I'm, I'm not, I don't have that enjoyment so much because now the tarantula is dug in its burrow and I can't even see it. And, you know, and then it, all those feelings just start piling up. You just start feeling like shit. And if you have a history of uh, addictive personality, the cure for that is usually what's going to bring me an endorphin rush. So then I go back online. I start shopping for more tarantulas and I buy, and it's this cycle that goes. And before you know it, you've got a hundred tarantulas and you're behind on your bills and you know, you, you can't take care of them as well as you should be able to. And it's, it's not something you can really call somebody out on. You can't, I can't be like, Hey man, I think you're, you know, you're out of, you're getting out of hand here because you know, it, how, how can you, you know what I mean? Like somebody can't, realize they're an addict unless they acknowledge it you know so and i don't know their situation but i think it's something that really should at least be discussed sometimes and talked about that you know the keeping tarantulas is cool and having a lot of tarantulas can be very rewarding and i completely understand that but there's also a, a downside to it that uh you know whether you're trying to replace somebody that passed away or uh, you know you're just kind of filling that void you know that maybe left from a drug addiction or whatever it is you got to be responsible, you know? Um, and, and there needs to be some kind of accountability or some way for people to, you know, acknowledge or kind of call out behavior that could be self-destructive. Absolutely. I think, I think the self-destruction, self-destructive, um, part of what you're saying is really what we need to look at. And like, first of all, like being able to acknowledge, like you have great friends who will actually check you, right. Being able to have people in our lives that check us. Um, if we're buying too many clothes or too many things on Amazon or, and we're, we're also complaining about money at the same time, you know, being able to have people in our lives that are honest and loving enough to be like, Hey, you might want to pay attention to this because you've been buying a lot of stuff. And you were also just saying yesterday that you were, or last week that you were broke or you're worried about money. So, um, being able to have supportive people in our lives and also like the way that in the mental health field that we not only diagnose mental illnesses, but also look at addiction is what is this doing to the person's life? So, you know, if you've got tarantulas and you're still able to work, be productive, have relationships in your life, be financially okay, um, maybe it's not such a, a big issue and you still have other hobbies and things that and so your life looks very full. However, if you um, are in financial distress and you're like, your work can't support the hobby that you're getting into. And if, and if you are now isolating because you're so consumed with spending time on the internet, looking up tarantula stuff. And, and, and if you're neglecting your health because you're, you know, either online shopping too much or, or you're isolating and you're not showering and doing those basic needs, um, then we start to look at like, okay, this is actually causing some sort of self-destruction. And so this is something that we need to look at. Um, even if you've now amassed a collection that you can actually take care of while taking care of yourself, those are all things that we need to look at. And, you know, we can, we can really look at it like, you know, yes, keeping tarantulas or taking care of animals is in some aspects healthier than you drinking a lot of alcohol as far as your physical health. But I think a lot of people don't know what this does to you financially. Um, you know, there are definitely, very expensive, um, 
like, you know, having a dog or cat with medical issues is very expensive, but so can tarantula keeping. Like I first got into the hobby with my one tarantula because I thought it was going to be a really cheap pet. And she is because she was already fully grown. So she's in the same enclosure that I first got her in and she's been in there for seven years. But if you've got all these tiny little tarantulas and you just got 50, you know, those little deli pops are going to work for a little while, but you're going to have to buy 50 enclosures if in, in a few years. If So I hope that you're planning for that. Um, yeah. And these tarantulas are going to need food every single week. And you're going to have to buy like 20 pounds of substrate or like, I don't know what you're going to have to do, but you know, yeah. really thinking about the investment and not only that, but like, I feel like sometimes if you really are in that, um, of like really wanting to get into the exotic species, that is a big investment. So, um, you know, we want to think about trying to do that in a healthy way to where it's enriching your life instead of causing a level of destruction. I talked about that in a video. Um, I don't remember which one it was, but it was, it was about people like buying a lot of spiderlings and that you can put 10, 15 spiderlings on a shelf in your house, but soon those are all going to be six to nine inch spiders that are going to need 10 gallon enclosures. And that now you need, now you need shelves and, and the biggest cost, I think that uh, myself and, and I think a lot of people don't think about, especially when they're amassing a large collection is like space, like that's expensive. So, I mean, you're in a one bedroom apartment. You may all of a sudden need to get a two bedroom apartment just so you have room for all your enclosures. Um, luckily I, w- I have a basement that I could kind of do that in, but you know, my, like I, I was very similar to, I would only have like one or two tarantulas at a time for many, many years. And I was lucky enough to have somebody in my life that kind of called me out on it. But like, it was after my father had passed away or it was before he had passed away, but he was like really sick. And it was this, he was four hours away and would get a phone call from my mom saying, you know, like, this is, he, this is the day you need to come down and say goodbye. And I'd drive down there and we'd be there for the weekend and talking to him. And then he'd pull out of it and be okay. And then it's like, all right, near miss, come back home a couple weeks later, doctors are saying he's not going to live another 48 hours. So then we could drive back down there. You know, it was this back and forth kind of, it was, it was emotionally straining. And at the time I had only had, you know, like, it had been maybe a year or something that I hadn't been using drugs and alcohol. So like I wasn't in the best place emotionally and mentally at that moment. And I've kind of found some solace in getting tarantulas. Like I, it was about also about that same time I realized you could buy tarantulas online. You know what I mean? It was like this, this culmination of all this stuff happened at once. And I was like, I'm getting 10 tarantulas, you know, or I started with like two and then it was like, okay, next order is 10. And then the next month I, I do it, you know, and it was, I had a friend that was like uh, a couple of friends actually, and my wife that were like, uh, I think that you're you're using tarantulas here to kind of not deal with how you're actually feeling or what's going on in life, and you know it was. I'm lucky that I had somebody like that in my life, and and when I see somebody out there that's going through something similar, I always try and and relate to them and explain like, tell my story or something like that. But uh, there's a, there's a lot of it going on that I don't think uh, that we're aware of, and. And it's not, I'm not saying it's always drugs and alcohol, but I mean, like you were mentioned, sometimes you're getting out of a bad relationship or you lost your job or yeah, it's, it's bad things happen. And, uh, it's really easy to, to use tarantulas and, and, and not just tarantulas. I mean, scorpions, you know, snakes, there's, there's a lot of different exotic pets, um, or, you know, and so many other things that we could use, but I, I'm just very attuned to it in, in this hobby because it, it seems like it's something that happens a lot. Uh, people that are dealing with very stressful situations and it sucks seeing the entire cycle where somebody's amassing this large collection and, you know, are a self-proclaimed expert and are just super obsessed about it. And then the next time next year, they're trying to sell off their entire collection because they're like over it. They're overwhelmed or they're frustrated or whatever it is. And, you know, it's, it's just bad all around bad for the tarantulas. It's bad for your mental health. It's bad for the hobby. You know, it's, it, it sucks seeing this, it's my, I was, who was it? My grandmother all the time. used to say what, uh, starts as a, was it, what starts as a fire burns up in the flame or something like that. You know, so when I see somebody get like super excited really fast, it's like, Oh no, <laughs> like you're going to burn out real quick, man. Um, you know, take your time. There's, it's, it's a journey, but it's, it's something that I'm just really sensitive to because I, I lived it. I went through it. I, I had to, in a lot of ways, kind of turn that negative into a positive. Like that's part of the, like, 
what am I going to do with all these tarantulas now? <laughs> like, I, I have them. I'm taking care of them. I enjoy them. Um, but there's, I, I need to, I need to pro- somehow grow from this experience. And, and it started with like, I'll just take pictures of them and share them online. You know, I, that's some way I can share my love with other people and, and meet other people like me. And it's, and that's just kind of grown into, well, now we have a podcast and <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I didn't think it would go this route. Yeah, what you did. And I, I think that's such a beautiful message as far as um, resilience and um, being able to turn a very negative experience. I think grief is one of those big triggers, whether it's lo- like, like you said, loss of job, relationship, loss of a loved one. Um, being able to turn that into something. And even if we've gone a little bit overboard in one direction of our lives, being able to be like, okay. Um, how can I actually make this really positive? And I think that um, I want to return back to mental health a little bit um, in a second, but what I have seen a lot, and this also does um, go along with mental health, is that the tarantula hobby and community can also be a beautiful, amazing place to find connection. I've met so many amazing people like yourself, so many, whether it's through Facebook groups, YouTube, um, people that are like subscribers to my newsletter. There are, there are so many wonderful people. And for a lot of people, if we're talking about mental health, um, I think something that goes along with the tarantula hobby is neuroticism. So if we're talking about that, that is usually a factor in anxiety and depression, which a lot of tarantula owners say that that tarantulas help them with. Um, I think you've got to be to some degree a little bit neurotic in your personality if you are somebody who, who can take care of a lot of tarantulas or even just one, like making sure that their tank is meticulous and they're healthy, you know, not stressed out, all of that stuff. I think that tarantula owners, many of them do have that part of their personality. And, and when we're a little bit neurotic, we might also be a little bit isolated or feel alone. Perhaps you're struggling with depression. And so maybe the tarantula hobby and community as a whole provides of space for us that the rest of the world doesn't really make room for.